everyone, let's start a vlog. I have no big plans on the weekend, just a lot of reading, a little bit running and exercise and all those things. And I have to go vote tomorrow. So, but let's start with reading and running because it's Saturday morning, I'm about to go for a run and I started The God and the Gumio recently and I just wanted to tell you about it. The book just came out this week, I think, and I really, really enjoy it. The book is an urban fantasy where the fantastical elements are taken from Korean folklore. It follows a dual narrative where we have one narrator, the god, and the other narrator is the gumio. So let's start with the god. He is a fallen god, actually. He's the brother of the king or the emperor of the gods, and some hundred years ago, or a couple of hundred years ago, he wanted to overthrow his brother and take the throne. And I think he lasted five minutes with that, and then he was overtaken or defeated or whatever it was. Basically, he failed, was discovered, and demoted or he fell from godhood. He was sent down to the mortal realm to collect or catch 20,000 unrulies that are ghosts and other creatures that are making trouble in the mortal world that he has to collect and send to their punishment as his punishment before he can be reinstated as a god and return to the god's country realm, you know, the place where the gods live, and have his godly power back all of a sudden. He used to be the god of mischief, so kind of expected that he's not the nicest person. Currently, he's working in it as a detective, trying to catch the unrulies. The detective agency or the police station is invisible to the mortals. They just see it if they have interactions or have trouble with the unrulies or immortal creatures and they need immortal police. I don't really know if they actually have a real name, but that's where he's working at right now. Currently, he's very grumpy, he really loves coffee and is not in the bestest of moods and trying to catch two specific creatures, mostly. Okay, let's move on to the Gumio. A Gumio is a fox spirit, so a nine-tailed fox who can take on human form. Usually it takes them about a thousand years as a fox before they can take on human form, so this fox spirit is rather old. And she works at a cafe but hates coffee, and she also dislikes the god, who is a regular customer and very annoying all the time. So they have met before. In the past, Gumio was a very unruly character in 1888, there was a spree where she went and ate a little bit too many livers and souls. In case you don't know, fox spirits eat men's livers and they can also eat their souls. It's forbidden now, but because of what she did in 1888. She always says it's lucky because she has stuffed herself so much that she's not hungry anymore. But for some reason, she was attacked by some stupid frat boys and she was angered, so she got away with herself and killed them and took the livers to her friend who hasn't eaten a liver before because since she's been in human form, it's been forbidden and she's very scared and things. But anyways, that's the crime that she has committed and the friend is very worried. She's not so worried because she got away with everything when she was a scarlet fox back in the past and had this reputation. But now, the god detective is onto her. And that's where the fun starts. We get all this told in alternating chapters by the two characters and their perspectives. We know that the god is clearly overwhelmed and needs help, but he's a loner. So his boss says, you need an assistant. And the Gumiya overhears that when it's also been talked about in her cafe that they are searching for the murderer and they suspect it's a Gumio. So she is a little bit, dang, I was sloppy. Let's be the assistant. And I do have to admit, if I were nitpicky, it's a little bit easy how easy she could get the detective's assistant and also how snappy and bossy she can react or act around and with him. 
It fits her personality, but it's really strange that everybody else lets her get away with it, that she feels more like a partner than an assistant, but it's fun. So right now we are in the situation that they're definitely still enemies. She's trying to divert his research, or what is the word for investigation, investigation, so that he doesn't find out that she's the Gumio who killed the man and that she's back. So, but on the other side, there's also this other creature that is killing creatures and it's a very dangerous one for everyone around. So, so the god recently just got the order to kill the Scarlet Fox and kill the other monster, which, the name of which I forgot. And now the Gumio knows about it because she was eavesdropping. And that's where I'm at. I'm highly enjoying it. The atmosphere is fun. The story is fast paced. Like I said, there are some things where you could frown at. It is, is believable, but it's a fun escapism story. The world is not much world building. You just get thrown into the world in the mortal world, get a few explanations of some of the characters and what's going on, but there's no world building done, which is not that much necessary because it's a human world. So. I am hoping for an enemies to lovers. I've seen that it's the first in a series. I don't know how many, but I hope it's standalone series so that we're just building the characters and they will go on to have more adventures. But right now there are still enemies and searching for the murderers. I'm intrigued. Let's go for a run and listen some more. I knew it. I ran for about an hour and in that hour I could see the walls of hatred crumble in the god and I can definitely see that the Gumio is attracted to his abs. There's a six pack that happened and I left them, probably unwise to leave them there, but half naked in a shared hotel room. So I really need to continue, but I got home. I couldn't run anymore. Horrible. I have four hours left in the audiobook and I really am trying to find a way to squeeze those in into the weekend so I can finish that. Maybe listening two more hours today and maybe two more hours tomorrow. We'll see. But first I wanted to continue reading a little bit. If you've seen my May wrap up, you know that I've been rereading the Have an Official's Blessing series. I'm on book three right now and I have about a hundred 20 pages left in the second arc and I must admit it's not one of my favorite arcs. The flashback arcs, which this one is the first of, I really don't like, not for the writing part but more for the story part. They're really hard to read and heartbreaking because this first flashback is all about how the crown prince lived before he ascended and then his ascension and his first real struggle being a god and facing difficulties. So three years after his ascension his country fell into a war with another it's actually part of their country, so I'm a little bit confused, but there has been a real drought in another city or area and everyone is fleeing to the capital, which is where the king lives and where the crown prince grew up. And he tries to help everybody, but a war breaks out and he really notices that he can't do everything as a god. And that's the part I'm reading right now. So this is more or less the gist of the first flashback that we're facing, that we see him really trying hard and failing and realizing things aren't working out. We have to remember that he ascended with 17, so he was very, very young and naive. And it's always addressed that the state preceptor, who was his teacher, thought he ascended too young, that it's too early for him to ascend because he's well, 17, we know how we are with 17, naive and idealistic. We think things can be solved easily. The more we grow and the more experience we get, we notice that that's unfortunately not true. And this is part of the first time that he really faces this and it's in a very difficult and heartbreaking way. So I am trying to fly and skim a little bit through the next 100 pages to get out of there and continue with the story. I think in the present that's how it continues. It's only my second read of the series, so I'm not 100% on everything when it happens when. But yeah, I already know that the next 100 pages will not be my happiest reading experience. So trying to finish that today. 
mission accomplished. I finished the flashback. And I have to say, because I knew what happened, it wasn't as heartbreaking or as difficult to read. So that's a benefit of rereading all the difficult parts. You're not as emotionally devastated as you are the first time reading. Anyways, I was a little bit faster than I expected. As it's 4 p.m. now, I'm hungry. I'm too lazy to cook. So let's go listen to some more of the God and the Gumio and eat at Mashthe. Well, get takeout and then take that to Mashthe. This is fun. Seriously fun. So even though the change from hatred to indecisiveness and insecurity to awkwardness to wanting to be together was very fast, but it was hilarious. I like the banter. And those two are really riddled with doubts. It's just fun to see them together. They are also still, of course, on the hunt for the monster that wants to kill everyone and destroy the human world and turn it into a dark world. And the last chapter was really, really oh, sad and disgruntling. So yeah, I'm going to take a break now. And I just got back home. And I need to lie down now because I'm completely overwhelmed and exhausted and turn off my brain for the rest of the day. Sunday morning, or rather noonish. It's almost lunchtime. And I got up late. I woke up really, really drained. I really don't know what I do in bed lately that I, no matter how many hours I sleep, even if the time seems enough, I wake up exhausted. So I'm not in a good mood today and I'm not that much energized. So I need to make a little change to my day. So I already canceled cleaning. This is the first thing I always cancel when I don't feel good. Probably not the smartest choice, but what can you do? I stayed in bed late and read another, a little of those adventures. Not happy about this. Camera died in the middle while I was talking. Where was I? I was talking about the heaven officials blessing and that I finished one of the other little stories or adventures that happened and that I really enjoy about this storyline that even though the series is eight books and you need to read the whole series to come to the end of the full story, the overall story, there are little parts in it where you have little adventures. And that's actually the kind of series that I like where you get a world and you really enjoy the world that you're in and you enjoy the characters. And then you can go on adventures with these characters, but you're not in a high stakes drama all the time. You're not really big story arc where something happens at the beginning and 10 books later you get the solution. But I really like the small adventures that you can go on with characters and that's the, my favorite kind of fantasy series or series overall is standalone books in a same world with the same characters. That's why I love the disc world so much. And that's what the have an official's blessing does as well. Even though you have the whole story and the ending after eight books, you still get these little adventures where you get to hang out with the characters. These little adventures grow in stakes as we move on and uh, the more they are connected to the overall story. But this one this morning was just this banquet they have in heaven where the gods basically compete about how many followers they have and how many people worship them and things like that. It was just a snippet fun adventure, getting to know the world a little bit better and the characters and some fun things that happened. I really enjoyed that. So I have about 130 pages left in book three. I'm not exactly sure if I'm going to finish all of that today. It would be nice. Technically, I would have the time, but I don't know if I have the brain space to do all of that. Something I really have to do today is go vote. We're voting the European Parliament today, and so I need to go and vote because you go vote and use your right in de democracy to participate in it. And I must say that Germany is very low resistance when it comes to voting. Weeks before the date, I get a postcard that tells me exactly where I have to go, when I have to go, and it's around the corner, it's not far away. It's always been like that as long as I've been eligible to vote. I've been getting postcards and I don't think I've had to go far to go vote. This is just two blocks down the road. And it's very convenient, it's very good, and it's always on Sundays. Germany always votes on Sundays, so it's easy to make the time. You have 12 hours between 8 and 6 p.m., 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. to go. And like I said, it's very low resistance and supporting that you participate in the democracy, which 
I always am surprised in other countries how difficult it is to vote when the country proclaims to be a democracy. Like, make it easy for your people to vote if you want them to participate in the world. The voter outcome is still pretty low in Germany, I think, sometimes for how easy and how important it is to vote. So that's what I have to do today. And that's when we leave the house. I also have two, a little bit more than two hours in the God and the Gumio left. So my plan is to go vote. And while I'm outside, go on a walk, hopefully a two hour walk that will have me finish the book. I noticed at some point that I said it was a series which I forgot apparently while listening to it because I am hoping that the story with the monster they're hunting and their relations and their relationship status will be ended and then the next in the series will be a new adventure with those two. But I'm starting to wonder if that's actually going to happen or if I'm being strung along with a cliffhanger. And as I mentioned, the book just came out this week. So when will book two be out? If there will be even a publishing for book two, because who knows the money deals that authors get. And I may have done something bad here. I will update you later and see how much reading and listening and walking and whatever I get done. Maybe I have more energy when I come back and do other things, but not very hopeful on that. Right now, I feel like lying down and not thinking. Anyways, I'll think I'll read for a bit. Let's end the vlog on a voiceover. I finished The God and the Gumio and oh my god, there was quite some action at the end, some twists and turns and a great ending. I really, really highly enjoyed this audiobook. I enjoyed the story, I enjoyed the narration, the tone, everything was just exactly what I wanted. Sure, you can nitpick about things that are a little bit too easy, a little bit too convenient, but I don't care. It was fun. Pure fun. And I highly recommend it if you're in any way a fan of fantasy K-drama, go for it. And with that, I'll finish the vlog. I'll try to edit this today and then, yeah, be sad a little bit more. Anyways, let me know in comments what you read this weekend. Did you read something exciting? Are you interested in The God and the Kumio? Have you read The Heavenly Official's Blessing? Are you interested in that at all? Let's talk books, people, and weekend reading. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for sticking around this long and have a wonderful week.